Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of gibberish band names looking at a band that I don't actually know is gibberish. We're looking at Blutz aus Nord which translates to blood from north which is not a particularly clean sentence but is kind of clear in its intention and it could just be a translational thing where there's no article. No, we could just call it Northern Blood, I think would probably be a, a looser translation. But, uh, yeah, I don't know that it's exactly gibberish, but it's what we're doing today. We're going to be check out, we're, we're going to be checking out a track off of their 2022 album, Disharmonium Undreamable Abysses. This is track five from that album, That Cannot be dreamed. I love those really sharp stops volume wise to bring it back down really funky drumming jazzy halftime okay It's very overwhelming. Those microtonal increases in range or in pitch.
<laughs> wow. The drummer's raw control over the time feel is... Holy cow. So this is cool. Because this is black metal without guitars or traditional guitar tones I suppose we can roll with they might be guitars for all I know lots of bending but it could it could happen bendings and slides uh, maybe even fretless I would say anyways the idea here is that it just doesn't sound like guitars but it does sound like black metal and I associate a lot of black metal with the guitars and it's really cool for me to find a way to separate them through this track um but there's also something about this that is very not blackened and and doom can we classify this as doom as well this is uh honestly kind of bizarre it's it's they made metal with drums and a synthesizer which at, at least what I'm hearing again they, they could be guitars doing these lines there there could be vocals in here kind of some places I, I don't really know uh, definitively I hear electronic-esque sounds and drums and that's not typically instrumentation I associate with metal but this is gloomy and heavy like metal <laughs> Um, the drums. We got to talk about the drums first. They are this drummer's phenomenal. Uh, there's tons of groovy swing ideas in here. Uh, for those who don't know, straight apes have the same weight to all of them. So if our beat is one, two, three, four, our eighth notes are. Boom, 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 boom. It's every, it's every half of a beat. Swing, we give a little bit more emphasis to one of them, which kind of gives it, well, as soon as you hear it, you'll immediately know. You'll be, oh, that sounds like jazz music. Boom, ba-doom, 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 right? It's got an extra bit of weight on one, one's shorter, one's longer, and it creates a syncopated groove to it. There's a lot of that in here. It's it's swing and metal always works. I don't I don't think you guys have tossed me anything that was swingy metal and I'm like, eh, I don't know. Like it always works so well for me. Um 
and to hear it in a different setting. Because the thing about jazz drumming is that it's very almost effortless and minimal in a lot of ways. It's going about primarily to dig into the... Now, there's faster jazzes. Uh, you know, bebop is going to use jazz drums very differently than swing or big band. But when you think of jazz music, presumably many of the classics, the jazz standards, you're going to look at some very subdued drum work. Metal is the opposite. Metal is big, it's bombastic, it's loud. Drummers play a lot of stuff in, in metal. Um, so it's really cool to hear this swing groove played in such an expressive... That's not quite... Jazz, jazz drumming is expressive too. It's just expressive in a different capacity. In such an explosive style. And not only is it explosive uh, volume-wise, right? The drums are very loud or that there's a lot of different types of drums. There's, I swear there's like five toms and like 10 cymbals on this kit. There's so much sonic variety in the, the sounds that our drummer has access to and utilizes. Um, but there's also just a lot of uh, creative ideas in this drumming as well. Um you know, when to shift to toms, when to do a roll, when to do, uh, what is that, ghost notes, when when to do anything, you know, there's nothing really standard in here. Sometimes the swing isn't even on the cymbals, which is the stereotypical place to put them, like a hi-hat or a ride cymbal, that right it's just very graceful symbol work but this dude swings his bass kicks and the way that his bass kicks work off of his snare like there's a swing syncopation between the snare and bass kick and that relationship rhythmically and just like who does that <laughs> uh it's it's just a lot of experimentation while keeping it extremely within the bounds of what is metal. It's not an experimental sound, but it's experimentation of the metal drumming sound. It is still highly palatable by the end of the day, but there's really cool things in here I've never heard before. Uh, and that's, I, I love that. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of experimentation. I like to hear new things. But then there's just, again, a wide variety of concepts. There is that blackened 16th note bass kicks with, like, blast beats and just, like, a ton of stuff. In fact, there were some sections that reminded me of Ungua's drumming where, like, the snare and, and bass and tom were all very much black metal. But there's this fun, bouncy jazziness on the cymbals. And we heard some of that combination here. But there was also just like some laid back, heavier drumming. There was some really melodic flow going on in some sections too, where it was barely any notion paid towards sitting in the pocket and playing out the heartbeat of the song. And it was more about utilizing the drums as another musical instrument. And we'll get into that in a second, because I think it's important that the drums take that role every once in a while, because it's kind of not there often. We'll get to it in a second, though. <laughs> um, and the drums shift from faster speeds to half-time speeds and then half-timing the half-time speeds. Um, and they always find a way to keep things feeling fresh and moving forward, regardless of what the time feel is. And none of this even calls into question what happened in the final 40 seconds or so when the drummer was playing around with time so frequently and meticulously that I honestly just want to say it was in free time without any other meter set because I really couldn't pick up any sort of pattern that would make sense unless we were changing the time signature like every two, three, seven beats, sometimes less. It was just masterful control of time. The dude was a time wizard for 30 seconds of the song. A lot of words to say this drummer fascinated me. 
And it's a good thing too because the drums were one of the few things I had to latch on to as far as what I typically listen for critically. The rest of the band is ambient metal? There really isn't a lot of movement going on. There's not chord progressions per se. Not really melodies. There's possibly harmonies. We do have two instruments or two tones happening at any given time, but there's so much distortion and compression and white noise everywhere that I really had a tough time hearing notes out of these ideas. And for all I know, they weren't just playing single notes anyways. I am guessing they were synthesizers. It's possible they're polyphonic and can play multiple instruments on their, or multiple notes on their own. We could be looking at very complex scales, but all I heard was the fuzz for the most part. That's not to say I didn't hear notes, but I had a real tough time hearing note relationships. These instruments, as far as I could tell, were designed to set the stage for the song. They bring the texture. They bring the power. They are exceptionally wide sounds. They feel like they're filling up so much space, despite just being one or two instruments. Um, they bring a pitched quality... Even if I couldn't pick out specific notes per se, they bring a pitched quality to the song. And it, it just really is about like these otherworldly trumpets <laughs> blasting as loud as they can. And the sounds coming out don't quite make sense to my ears. Not to mention the fact that, as far as I could tell, it's a lot of microtonality. I think synthesizers, because it's really easy to hold a note out and then use a pitch wheel to make it higher or lower, to slowly make it sharper or flatter. Consistently, even. You can pitch up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Uh, depending on where you set your software, uh, you know, how much your wheel moves, all sorts of things. Uh, you could even pitch up and pitch up and down an entire octave. You'd have two octaves worth of control without actually changing any of the notes on the keyboard. And it's granular. You're not just going to the next note. You are slowly shifting the pitch. You're getting all the microtones between the notes of the Western uh, temperament. Uh, and and it's just, it almost sounds like madness. <laughs> Have you ever seen those pictures? Maybe they're AI generated. And like out of the corner of your eye, you can kind of make like, oh, that kind of looks like a backpack. But when you look at it, it's certainly not a backpack. In fact, nothing that you're directly looking at makes any sense but in the periphery of your vision you can see things that make sense but as soon as you look at them it's like no it's it's like this this moment of recognizing things but not actually seeing anything that is normal and that's kind of what the music feels like anytime that i'm paying attention to something else like the drumming for instance I can kind of hear musical ideas, but the moment I key into it, it's just kind of this white noise and the pitch kind of is always changing subtly. It's nothing I can ever really lean on. It's The music is just constantly morphing. I don't really hear movements, but I know change is happening. In ways, it almost feels like what fourth dimensional music could possibly be like or experiencing maybe a possible ex uh, hearing experience of listening to fourth dimensional music, which I don't even know what the fourth dimension would be. <laughs> fourth dimensional make, uh, we'll just go like extra planar. I think that makes more sense in my mind. Fourth dimension is more about like physicality. But yeah, just like. A different element of, of like like music from another plane of existence where like there's elements that I'm like oh you know that's that's musical but 
it just sounds so bizarre. I can't make heads or tails of what these instruments are doing. And then when you pair in the wails and screams and moans and whatever other sounds, like I don't know if there's lyrics. There's just like something kind of like voices <laughs> that are just kind of like panning around the sound sphere. And I mean, this is just like Lovecraftian music. I could imagine Cthulhu appearing with this music around him. And it's just as uh, mentally mind blowing as seeing this elder god would be hearing the music that would represent him. It's got that same type of uh, inducing insanity element to it. It's phenomenal on so many levels. I, I, I really hope that 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 my excitement is coming across, that even though I don't understand what's going on here, I kind of, I know how it was produced, but I, I really have a hard time understanding the music itself. Its impact, its effect are very palpable. This isn't experimental or avant-garde where it's just kind of weird and strange and maybe I don't know how they even made it and, and stuff like that and it's just kind of odd. No, this this is odd and strange but effective. The atmosphere they create with this is understandable. It almost feels... I don't know. Well, I mean, the, the album art's not helping either. I mean, did you guys see this? <laughs> <laughs> what do you, what even is this? Uh, I I don't know. This looks like it would fit in with Lovecraft stuff anyways. There's two moons even and trees that bend. Uh, reality's being distorted by this fleshy creature with tentacles and uh sacks of some sort. I kind of thought eggs at one point, but I mean just pus sacks. It's kind of like a gross thing to say, but I mean, yeah, the the album art is not helping my, <laughs> not helping me get away from the idea of just hellish music. But yeah, just wild stuff, and that's I think that's just the best way to wrap it up. It's wild stuff. I know how it was made. Like I mentioned, even if they were utilizing guitars and not synthesizers, you I would presume they're using fretless and you can just slide up and down. You can do bends, uh, you know, for for lower notes and whatnot. Like there's there's ways to achieve the microtonality. It's not necessarily the instruments that make this what it is. It's how they're used. It's it's the bending of the composition to become ambient metal <laughs> where time is is barely even a thing in places i mean the song is called that cannot be dreamed it makes perfect sense for this to be some sort of again lovecraftian elder god which by definition cannot be described that simply seeing it causes someone to uh, lose their sanity this sound is supposed to be describing something that is undreamable and the music really bends into that or <laughs> leans into that, bends into that. It leans into that perfectly. It is music that I hear and kind of get, but I don't understand, but it's still palpable. It's still something felt, but it's not, it's always on the periphery. The moment you look at it, it's not music, but if you just let it be, it's a very palpable feeling. I don't know if there are lyrics to this. I looked and couldn't find any. Uh, the one site that has the song listed is uh, Genius.com, and it says that it won't have the lyrics until the song is released. And uh, The song was released like six months ago, so I don't know what's going on there. I don't even know if there are lyrics. So like I said, to me, I just heard like wailing and screams and stuff. Maybe they were words, but... Honestly, I don't think knowing the words would change anything, and I kind of hope there aren't any, or 
simultaneously that they never release them if there are. The ambiguity of that sits perfectly fine with the ambiguity of the melodic and harmonic choices in here. The temporal choices. The song to me is not supposed to be understood. It's not supposed to be in any rules that would help grasp the nature of it. To me that goes against the song. Those are my thoughts on Blutz aus Nords that cannot be dreamed. What did you think of this though? Did you enjoy it? Got anything you'd like to add to what I said? Maybe. You got some stuff to correct me on. I'm sure that <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in here that I was kind of guessing at uh, in the creation process. You want to correct me on that? Please let me know. Hit me up in the comments with any of that. Above the comment section is a description box and in there is a link for Linktree. It takes you to this menu right here. It has links for everything related to the channel including multiple ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord community, and a link to the music I make as well as so much more. There's like, I don't know, 20 links in there. Go check it out. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. Alright, we have a uh, <laughs> special selection coming up next. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC as usual. We're going to wrap up this week. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos.